So in this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step how to properly structure what we call first time obedience. So you're never, ever, ever, ever counting to three ever again. And you're actually giving your instruction once and it gets done like magic. And it's amazing. We do this trick with our seven children and I'm going to break it down for you. So let's do this. The strongest influence in your child's life wins. Is that you? I'm Brad Zood and this is Influencer Parenting. One, two, two and a half, two and three quarters, right? What are we doing? We're counting to three and we're threatening our children with something, right? So a child who can come on three comes on one. Now, why is that? How can that be? Your child knows that there's going to be a consequence at the end of three. So what if there was a consequence at the end of one, right? That would just make sense. But let's back up a step before that. First time obedience. So here's typically what happens. You're at home and you call your child's name and you say, Ricky Bobby, clean your room. And you have no idea what happened when you projected your vocals into the abyss of your home. Did your child hear? Do they know what's going on? Do they know the expectation? Have they confirmed back? All those things. So let's break this down step by step. And I'm going to show you how to save so much time and make your life so much easier. So, all right. So I'm literally sitting here editing the video. And I just wanted to say this before we continue that first time obedience is for any age of a child. This isn't just for toddlers or four year olds or five year olds. As you get on to the older age children, it becomes a little less formal of a process, but you still want to break it down into these steps of calling their name and making sure they're here and making sure that they understand. So for example, maybe your older children, you don't require them to come to you, but you at least require them to say yes, and then require them to say yes after you give the instruction. So like my older children, if they're in the other room sitting on the couch, we don't make them come up to us. Uh, an acknowledgement from across the room are, is more methodical and slow and step by step. You're going to want to take this. All right. Back to the sidebar. Um, before you do first time obedience, you want to train in a time of non-conflict, whatever activity is that you're going to ask your child to do. So if it's setting the table, you want to make sure that they understand that forks go on the left and glasses on the right. I think forks on the left, glasses on the right, or whatever the skill is that you're doing, you wanna make sure that you take the time to show them that properly so you both know what a job well done is and looks like. So here's what you're going to do. Step one, call your child's name. That's it. Step one is just simply getting your child's attention. You know, in the sales world, if you make a bunch of phone calls, and you get a voicemail, the only thing that you're trying to accomplish when you're leaving someone a voicemail is to get them to call you back. So what do you do? You say, oh man, hey, I got great news. I got something really exciting to, to tell you. Please call me back ASAP. You're just selling the call back, right? So in step one, when you're just wanting to get your child's attention, that's all you're doing. So you're gonna say, Ricky Bobby, and you're gonna train them to say, yes, mommy, yes, daddy. And for your younger kids, you might even train them to come into the room that you're in. Look, if you don't have their eyes, you most definitely don't have their ears. Just remember that in whatever setting you're in, if you don't have their eyes, you don't have their ears. And if you don't have their ears, you don't have their heart. So you may train your child to come to you, Ricky Bobby, and they, you may um, train them to say, yes, mom, I'm coming, and that they physically come to you. So you've completed step one, You've called their name and you are now in a position to speak into their life or give them a command or give them a structure. So then you're going to say step two is I would like you to set the dinner table by 530. You're going to give a very, very clear and concise instruction. So you've already trained them to set the dinner table. You know they can do it. If 530 is in 10 minutes from now, you know that 10 minutes is plenty of time to set the dinner table that they can do it. You've given a clear and reasonable instruction to your child. Then step three is that you're going to require them to affirm back to you 
that they've either understood the command or you might even actually have them depending on the age. For younger kids, you might even actually have them repeat the instruction back to you. So Ricky Bobby, yes, mommy, I'm coming. Ricky, I would like you to put your shoes away. What would mommy like you to do? Put my shoes away. And what do you say? Yes, mommy. So then step three, you're going to get that confirmation that they know and understand what they've been told. So step one, call and get their attention. Step two, give them the clear and concise instruction. Step three, affirm back what's going on. See, it's kind of like this. If Greta and I called you and said, hey, would your family like to come get Japanese food, one of our absolute all-time favorite foods, next Thursday at 7 p.m.? There are a lot of variables in that. And let's say you just said no. We would wonder, be like, wow, did you guys say no because you don't like Japanese food or Thursday didn't work or 7 p.m. didn't work? This is probably what you're doing now with your children is that you're lumping everything together. And when you space it out, you get a lot more continuity. So you start general. You say, hey, would you guys like to go to dinner with us sometime? Sure. Okay. We at least know that on some level you're interested in going to dinner with us. And then we can narrow things down and it makes it so much easier. So then after this point, after you've given clear and concise instruction, you want to actually follow through on the instruction. You want to inspect what you expect and actually have a consequence for not doing a job well done. The key to any successful parent-child relationship is that the child actually has to know and believe based on experience that you're serious. All right, so two quick things I wanna clear up here as I'm watching my own video and editing it. Um, number one is that I don't, when I say come on one, I don't mean like call their name and give you an instruction and then start counting. Don't count anything ever, okay? It's just give the instruction and they do it on the first time. Uh, the second thing is, is that when you actually inspect what you expect and you follow through with the consequence, the actual use of consequence dramatically decreases because they actually know that you're serious. So when you do that and you follow through, you're, you're probably thinking to yourself like, oh man, I'm gonna be given consequences like all the time because this happens all the time. But when you actually hold firm and you have a meaningful consequence, which I'll link a video here um, to that, which you need to watch after this, um, you're going to be administering them much less frequently and life is actually going to be better. In other words, they have to know that there will be consequences for a job that's not done. It's not an option to just not listen to mommy and daddy. It's not an option for me to have to call your name 15 times. So that's why a child who can come on three can come on one because at that point, the child builds up enough belief that you're actually going to do something about it by the time you get to three that they're going to obey. And unfortunately, it's typically by you raising your voice or you yelling or your anger that gets them this scared or this threat that, hey, I better do something or else mom's gonna go bananas. One of the biggest things that we talk about here at Influencer Parenting is not to use threatening or our anger to accomplish something. We wanna use our follow through to accomplish anything that we need. When our children legitimately believe that we're going to do something about it, then they will obey the first time and it will be a non-issue. Listen, most people in life are procrastinators anyways. They wait till the last minute. I sometimes wait until the last minute to do something. You know the busiest tax time of the whole year? April 14th. Why? Because taxes are due April 15th. We all remember in school being up way late the night before a paper was due, either starting it or finishing it or putting the finishing touches on it so that it could be ready to go in the morning. And this is a habit that we definitely want to train out of our children. And not to get like too overly dramatic, but listen, there's going to come a time where your child is in danger and you need them to listen to you. This is not a game. There could be a ball rolling out in the street and a car coming or whatever the scenario is. And because I love you, child, you need to come to mommy or daddy when I ask you. Okay, so if you're still watching this video, obviously you're getting amazing stuff out of this. So let me give you a pro tip. You need to play what we call the first time obedience game. So in the morning, what you're going to do is you're going to set your child down and say, when I call your name, you come and say, yes, mommy, or yes, daddy. And you're going to do that multiple, multiple times, probably 
five or six times in the morning and make it a game and make it fun. They're going to run to you and say, yes, mommy, and give them a big hug and be silly and say, okay, go back over there by the fireplace. Okay, I'm going to call your name. Are you ready? Yes, mom. Oh, and you have them come and, and make it fun and make them understand the exact process. So look, Anytime you want to train something, you need to do it in a time of non-conflict, not in the heat of the moment when tempers and all that stuff are hot and high. You train in a time of non-conflict when nothing is going on, the behavior that you want to do. All right, guys. So right below me is a link to one of our last videos about child discipline that I think you're going to like. It's going to piggyback this video a little bit. So make sure to click that right below here and really appreciate it, IP fam. Thanks for subscribing and liking. It means the world to us that you support the channel and we'll see you on the next one.